today, and I'm going to cheat a little bit because was, they told me there's only going to be six people, but there's more. So, <laughs> so Governor Scott Walker, thank you. Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, Attorney General Brad Schimmel, uh, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett, State Representative Joe Sanfilippo, State Representative Jesse Kramer, State Representative John Nigren, State Representative Cindy Duco, State Representative State Senator-elect Latani Johnson, um, Brookfield Mayor Stephen Ponto, uh, and there's many others I know that I, I have not uh, named and I apologize, but many other legislatures uh, that are in attendance with us and we appreciate everybody who's here today. Um, and why are we here today? So as you know, earlier in the year, Walgreens um, opened up 500 and and uh, made mention that they were going to have 500 of the safe medication disposal kiosks, this one similar to the one here to my left. In Wisconsin, we have 18 of the safe medication disposal kiosks, and these are kiosks that are available for patients to come in and to give us their non-prescription, prescription, controlled substance medications that they no longer are using. It is a safe, convenient place to allow patients to get rid of those medications and make sure that they're out of their medicine cabinets. Um, as a pharmacist myself and through Walgreens, one of the things that we do as pharmacists is we counsel patients on the ability to take those medications and make sure that they are very adherent to those medications. But oftentimes there are reasons where patients just don't use all of their medications. Whether it's uh, a change from the prescriber or sometimes uh, patients just are feeling better and they don't use those medications. What the disposal kiosks allow is a patient to come in in a very convenient location year round and dispose of those medications free of charge. Um, the other thing with support of a lot of the legislators here and the governor, um, the availability to receive uh, naloxone over the counter from the pharmacist. So that is something along with the, with the safe medication disposal kiosk that Walgreens is doing to help to lead the fight against prescription drug abuse. We have uh, many people here today, and but right now I'm gonna turn it over to Mayor um, Tom Barrett for some of his comments. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, and I want to welcome you to what I consider to be my Walgreens. Um, this is the Walgreens is closest to my home, so I've been in this Walgreens dozens and dozens of times. Um, so uh, I appreciate the fact that we're doing it right here. I also want to recognize Alderman Mike Murphy from the City of Milwaukee, who is here, who really has been the one in the City of Milwaukee who's led the charge on opioids and heroin misuse and has worked very closely with our health, the health department. So I want to acknowledge him as well. Uh, this is a very serious issue. If you look at, in the recent past, the number of deaths that have occurred as a result of opioid or heroin overdoses, uh, it surpasses the amount of deaths that we have for homicides, unsafe sleeping conditions, and car accidents combined. Um, this is not a minor issue. This is a serious issue that we face, not only in southeastern Wisconsin, but throughout this nation. Earlier this week, uh, former Congressman Patrick Kennedy was in town talking about this issue from a national perspective and the need to have a coordinated effort. And so um, efforts like making Narcan available are important steps to make sure that we are saving lives. That's what this is about. It's about saving lives. But we also have to recognize the reality. And the reality is the majority of drugs that are used in these overdoses are drugs that are purchased legally. Uh, and oftentimes they're purchased by friends or relatives. Um, and what we have to do is we have to make it easier for people who no longer need the drugs to get rid of them in a safe fashion. It is not safe to put them in the toilet or down the drain because our MMSD water system is not suited to, to deal with those issues. So we need a safe place for the drugs to be disposed, both in terms of our environment, but probably more importantly in terms of saving lives. And by having responsible corporate citizens like Walgreens who are stepping forward and saying, we want to be part of the solution, I think that that is a significant step forward. So I want to thank Walgreens 20. I want to thank you, your whole team. Um, this is responsible corporate citizenship, recognizing that people want to deal with this issue. Uh, and so it's important for us to do everything we can to make it accessible, to make it easy for people who want to do the right thing to do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Attorney General Brad Schimmel. Well, this, this little box that's here behind all of the elected officials is really a big deal. 
Uh, it's almost a year ago to the day that we announced the kickoff of the Dose of Reality campaign here in Wisconsin, a prevention and awareness campaign designed to change the conversation. For a long time, we had, we had talked a lot about heroin and the damage it was doing in our communities, and that was good that we were recognizing it, but we knew, and we know now still, that four out of five, 80% of the people who start using heroin first became addicted to prescription narcotic painkillers. 70% of the time, they got those prescriptions from a friend or a family member improperly, not from a street drug dealer. So we changed the conversation to talk about what people do with medications in their own homes. So it's a simple message. Use them only as they're prescribed to you. Store them safely and securely. And I've asked people many times, would you leave a loaded handgun sitting on the counter of your home with children coming in and out? And no one would. And yet, not enough people think about what's in their medicine cabinet when, as the mayor said, what's in, your, what's in the medicine cabinet is killing more people in Wisconsin, far more than handguns. So, so use them as prescribed to you. Store them safely and securely. And then this piece today, or what Walgreens is doing as a piece of this, get rid of them properly when you are done taking them. Don't save them. Don't, you know, if you have pain someday that would, would warrant taking a narcotic, you should not self-prescribe that with some old medication that you save for some future day. Get rid of it, and if you've got that kind of pain, go see your doctor and get this taken care of properly. Because what's important is we get those medications out of the stream where they can be diverted for abuse. So um, we have our next drug take back day in Wisconsin coming up October 22nd. And um, that's not the only way to get rid of them. We have over 250 sites in Wisconsin now at law enforcement agencies. And now we have 18 Walgreens sites where you can go and take your medications anytime at Walgreens when they're open, those law enforcement agencies 24-7. No questions asked, get rid of them. Don't keep those things around to be to create further problems. And Wisconsin's done a great job in partnership with the <laughs> medical community, the hospitals association, the medical society, the pharmacy society, the nursing association, all of them working with us closely to, uh, to develop this message. We've had some great success. Our last drug take, take back day in April, we collected over 64,000 pounds of prescription and over-the-counter medications that were safely destroyed. That put us number three in the nation. The only two states ahead of us were California and Texas, and they're much larger than us. And California only collected about 200 pounds more than Wisconsin. Wisconsinites are getting this message, and I'm thrilled that Walgreens has stepped up to be part of making it as easy as possible for people to do this and make Wisconsin safe and healthy again. So thank you very much to Walgreens. For, this, for being a leader among their peers to get this done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney General. And now, Governor Walker. Thanks, sir. Well, thanks, Tony. And uh, I would hope, <clears throat> excuse me, I would hope that uh, everyone here today uh, re recording this, reporting on this, would see that the, the good cross-section of um, different levels of government, city, state, local. Um, you've got uh, Republican, Democrat, you've got public, private, you've got all these different entities coming together because when it comes to this epidemic, it knows no boundaries. It doesn't know the difference between someone who lives in the city or the suburbs out in a rural area. It doesn't know the difference between someone who's rich or poor. Uh, it doesn't matter based on race or sex or any other thing out there. This is an issue that affects people all across the state and has appropriately been noted all across the country. Today we're going to announce a series of things that tie into that, but it's really important to note that it's, it's, there's not just one simple answer. Certainly Walgreens deserves incredible praise for being a leader in multiple ways. Um, as been mentioned before, you know, having the ability now with the standing order we've issued uh, through the state for Narcon, they can do that here, and so Walgreens has been a leader in that, and allowing that to be provided without uh, in a specific uh, prescription, but particularly uh, with now 18 sites like the one you have here, four of which are in the city of Milwaukee, many others within the region. They go as far away as up in the Marinette, the, over in Sheboygan, and across the way in La Crosse. They're all over the state, and as the Attorney General mentioned, there are a number of sites, many of which are at law enforcement or public facilities, which is great, and we've tried to improve on that as well. 
but it's just much more convenient to be at a place like Walgreens, and so we appreciate this. It's one of those where you know, most of us, hopefully, are, are spending little of any time uh, in the police station. Um, we're probably not in and out of City Hall often, but in most cases, you're probably at your local drugstore, sometimes as much as once or twice a week, depending on your family and the age of your family as well. And so, um, as the mayor mentioned, it, I spent almost eight years going up and down Wisconsin Avenue. This is a busy site. Um, it's a busy place. Other Walgreens across Milwaukee, southeastern Wisconsin, across the state are. And I would hope this would be an example where Walgreens would be a leader and encourage others, uh, whether it's other chains or other mom paws or whatever they might be, other sites, drugstores, and pharmacies across the state would see this and say, you know, this is a good service for customers, and more importantly, it's the right thing to do. The number's been thrown around, but when you have just about 80% of all the people who are currently addicted to heroin today didn't start on heroin, they started in a prescription drug. When you have the challenge that has been mentioned, and you get it why it affects anyone regardless of age, but increasingly why young people thinking, oh, you know, it's not illegal, it's a prescription drug. Mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, my next door neighbor got it. They didn't have to, they didn't have to do anything. They, they just got it legally out there. They don't realize that Having access to that opens the door for which leads into, all too often, not just addiction to things as bad as heroin, but sadly, way too often across this country, to death, to overdose deaths. <clears throat> CDC today says that today, right now, there's as many as 78 deaths because of drug overdose in the United States right now, just in this one day. That is 78 deaths too many. And so, whether it's here or anywhere else across the country, this is an issue that has got our attention. This is an issue where we thank Walgreens for their leadership, and because they were so gracious to announce it here today, we thought we'd take it a step beyond. Over the last several years, it's been one of those examples of, of something good that's come out of something bad in the sense that you've had cross-party lines across different parts of the state. You've had members of the legislature come together largely because of the, of the leadership of Representative John Nygren, who's here with us today, who has a very personal connection to this issue. But we've had a hope agenda that I've been pleased to sign into law where John and his colleagues have, have looked at really multifaceted, as comprehensive a strategy as possible. From things to public health, to law enforcement, to working with our pharmacists, to working with the medical community, to working with local officials. The things you see today all come out of that. And um, what we found is we're, as, as Brad Schimmel's pointed out to us, our Attorney General, Wisconsin, we're proud to say, is a leader in many ways in terms of combating this, this vice. But the challenge is when you look at these numbers, when you look at the fact, as the mayor mentioned, we have more people die in the state of Wisconsin from drug overdoses than they do from vehicle crashes, suicides, breast cancer, prostate cancer. Um, you go down the line, it is amazing when you think about the epidemic proportions that we've hit uh, when it comes to drug overdoses, overwhelmingly driven by people having access to prescription drugs. And so things like we're announcing today with these 18 sites are a key part of it. But we've got to do more. And so in a moment, I'm going to sign uh, an executive order that will do a series of things. Uh, first and foremost, it'll create a new task force that I'm pleased will be chaired by Representative Nigren and by our outstanding Lieutenant Governor. It will include uh, our Attorney General and several members of our cabinet from Health Services, Safety and Professional Services, Corrections, and our Insurance Commissioner. But it will also include other partners. We'll make sure that there's a member of the legislature from each party, from each chamber, uh, there'll be leaders in the coalition to stop, uh, to focus on the prevention of prescription drug abuse. Uh, there'll be at least two people, two members of the public, who they or their families have had a direct and adverse impact because of this scourge out there. And then we'll have our other partners in law enforcement, in the public health community, in the hospital association, in the medical society, and through our pharmacists, understanding that no one group or individual alone can come up with the ongoing needs and solutions here. It's going to take a team effort, and while we've done a lot over the last few years as a state through the HOPE agenda, uh, that's still obviously not enough, and so this task force will be charged with coming up with the next wave of things that we need to be focused on, not only in state government, but in local government, and within the private sector, public and private, local and state working together. We'll also be as part of this order uh, directing the, uh, the medical officer for the state to issue a medical alert pointing out just how serious this is. This isn't just something we're talking about, actually issuing a medical alert for the state uh, health officer, chief health officers, 
and then directing each of our state agencies to, as well to, to augment and assist the task force by coming up uh, with their own uh, plans and their own steering committees in each state agency to, to recognize what our, each of our agencies going to do to directly help the work of the task force and of the state as a whole going forward. Because this is an issue where we need all hands on deck. We certainly appreciate the good work of, of corporate entities like Walgreens stepping up uh, with these boxes that people will be able to come in and, and draw off, as was mentioned, prescription drugs, non-prescription drugs, um, other things in that regard. It's very clear, actually, on the box, you get a chance to look at it. It tells you what can and can't go in there, but it's pretty wide open in terms of when you get it here or you get it in the aisle, chances are if it's a drug, you can put it in there, and it's a lot easier than keeping it in your medical uh, in your in your drug uh, in your your medical case um, in your bathroom or in your kitchen or wherever people keep them. Once you're done, if you're done using them, get them here. Uh, you're going to stop like our household does. You're going to stop at places like this frequently. So just make it a practice every time you come in to pick something up, bring something to drop off if you got it in your medicine cabinet at home, because doing that could save the life of someone you love and care, and that's what it's really all about today. So we'll turn it over and then we'll do the. Uh, Tony, I'll give you this back. Thank you very much, Governor Walker. So at this time, we'd like to open up to any questions regarding the safety.